Hey everyone, I'm James Bernard and I'm here at Dubspot New York. Today I'm going to show you this Tempest analog drum machine from Dave Smith Instruments. I'm really excited about this piece because what this drum machine represents is some rich history. Dave Smith and Roger Lynn are responsible for some pretty heavyweight technologies in music production. Roger Lynn was responsible for the MPC-60 and the Lynn drum. The MPC-60 is used in just about every piece of hip-hop music that's ever been created since the beginning. Dave Smith, responsible for one of the first programmable synthesizers, the Prophet 5, and actually was responsible for creating MIDI, which we all use. So you're talking about two heavyweights here coming together on one piece of equipment. And I'll tell you, from spending some time with this thing, you can hear and feel each one of their influences in this piece. It is an analog drum machine. So you have some rich, rich sound sources, and you have a lot of ways that you can create sounds and change sounds in real time. What I want to show you right now is a little bit about the performance aspects, sort of Roger's influence on this piece. So of course, since it's a drum machine, you've got your pad bank here laid out, and when you call up the 16 sounds pad function, you can play your pads. You can assign any of 32 different pad locations for a sound. So in a kit, you can have 32 different sounds that are part of your kit. So in reality, I probably would be creating a pattern that was going to be many different patterns. It could be multiple songs. Because the way it's laid out is that when you call up a pattern or a project, as they call it, that project is entirely the settings of the machine. All the sounds, the effect settings, everything that's contained in that one state is a project. So a project can have multiple songs, but these pads also have multiple functions. Rather than just being pads to play, when you switch modes to, let's say, the 16 beats mode here, you can actually assign the beats that you've created to each pad. And that re makes it really fun for like rocking out different sections and kind of doing a live performance, which you can record as your main song if you want. Another cool thing is this time steps mode, which when you select that, you actually will see, like a grid, where you've put the notes on a 16-step grid, and it does that in real time. So it's very well thought out. I mean, obviously, Roger knows what he's doing, and it shines through here. So let me show you a little bit of an example of how I would use the, the pad functions to do a live performance. We're going to be using some of these real-time effects controllers, and these can change different parameters. Some of, some of it could be pitch, filter, what have you. You'll hear it as I go. Got a basic beat down, I did a simple hi-hat, and maybe my finger chops weren't quite so up to the task of doing some of those 16th note rolls. Well, there's a roll button that's right here that's pretty handy, and whatever you set the quantize to, it'll do rolls in that quantize. So I can just play some simple triggers, and it'll give me my 16th note rolls. If I wanted to do 30 seconds or triplets, let's add a few of those. So let's go into, let's say, a 16th note triplet. And we'll do the same thing, we'll get a little hi-hat roll in there. So that would be one way of recording of your, of your beats or making your patterns is to do it in real time. Some of us do a little bit of that and actually a little bit of step recording or using a grid. So if you've ever programmed the drum machine, maybe an old piece of hardware or even software, where you've got your sort of grid layout and you could put your beats in by just putting in the dots on the grid, well, you have the same possibility to do that on the Tempest. And it's called the 16 time steps mode over here in the pad function section. So when I select that, you're actually going to be able to see which one of the pads you're looking at by selecting the events over here in the screens. And then I can use this knob here to change my row. So if I, let's say I want to see the kick, well, I can see there on the screen it shows me my grid. This is two separate sections here. This represents one bar. So there's my first kick. So let's say I wanted to add another kick somewhere maybe towards the end of this and maybe a lower velocity. Since when you do it in time step mode, it will pick up how hard you hit the key. If I do it really light, it's going to be a really light note. But if I do it really hard, then I'm going to get a much harder note that goes in there. So what we're going to do is make sure that that pattern we have is completely clear. We hold down the erase button, hit erase all notes, hit it again, and we're good. So it's all clear. So I hit play, turn on click, we've got an empty pattern. And as you can see, the lights are going by indicating that we're at the first part and then the second part of the pattern. With it running, 
I'm just going to go in and start programming some parts. The way you select which part or which pad is going to be on the grid is using this right here, this knob up the top, the soft knob, which can select the row. A1 is kick, A2 is snare, hat, and so on. So I'm going to just show you how quick and easy we can just make a beat. Now, if I wanted to do some triplets and some other sort of feels in there on, let's say, those hats, right now it's set up to be a 16th note sort of layout. If I go back out of this events page and into just the pads page, right up here at the top you have your quantize knob. If I set that to, let's say, 16 triplets, what's going to happen now is that the entire grid changes. So if I go back into events mode and I'm looking at that hi-hat, you see how we don't see that same grid setup. So I can go in and put in like a little bit of a little trill here and there. So now we'll hear this. Fun stuff, pretty easy. So the next thing I want to show you is now that we've got our stuff in there, we of course could go step by step and look at each one of these steps and edit certain parameters. So let's say I didn't like that the hats were kind of jumping in velocity here and there. I can go in here and select the parameter itself. And we just select which one of these slots we're looking at by using this second soft knob here, which is the column. So once I select that, I can say, oh, that velocity's high, turn it down, what have you. And you've got a lot of parameters you can do. You can turn reverse on and off, roll on and off, change filters. There's a lot that can be done under the hood here. It's a pretty deep machine. But it's definitely one that you can get in and start making beats right away without having to be this involved into the editing of it. But it's there when you want it. The last thing I want to show you is once you, let's say you've got your beat down and we're cool and we want to actually now record it or perform with it, there's a function called the 16 beats mode. And when I select that function, what I can do is assign that beat that I've created and multiple variations of it to the pads. And now these pads now double as beat triggers or beat selectors or pattern selectors. And you can even record that performance and make that an entire sequence. So that's how you can start working on sections of a song. But one of my favorite things is the roll function that I used to do the 16th note rolls on the hats. That actually becomes available for the entire beat. And there's also another function which is pretty, pretty interesting called reverse. Since this is an analog drum machine, it's kind of weird to think that you could reverse it. But it's not a sample. What it's doing is it's actually taking the parts and reversing the envelopes so they actually go, in and go backwards. So the sounds that would normally have an attack transient become sort of a sweep back into the attack. It's pretty interesting. You've got to hear what it sounds like. Kind of like this. You can see how those can really take your performance and make it a lot more fun. It's much more tactile and much more instant. And that's sort of what these types of devices are for. You're going to have different performance aspects that you might not have if you're playing with some software in front of you. So far I've been showing you a lot of Roger Lin's influence on The Tempest. And now let's talk a little bit about Dave. Obviously Dave is known for synthesis. And so The Tempest is basically a six voice analog synthesizer. Six voices means that that's how many notes you can actually play at the same time. Each one of those voices has up to four different oscillators that it could have as part of the sound. That could be two digitally controlled analog oscillators plus two digital oscillators which are using samples or wavetables as their source for sound. Coming from that you also have a sub oscillator as well which is sort of underneath. You have ways that you can sync the oscillators, that you can do some really interesting textures on them. Running from that into the filter section, which is a true analog filter, it's either a two-pole or four-pole filter, which means a 12 dB or 24 dB slope, which means it's a more extreme sort of sounding filter at the 24 dB, with resonance. Plus, there's a couple of little tricks that it's got. One is audio rate modulation, which is essentially like FM modulation of the filter. And you also have a high pass filter, not with resonance, but great for rolling off lows, for things like claps and hats and things like that. Then you have the amp section, 
with a feedback, an amp feedback into the filter section. So you can get sort of overdriven, interesting, sort of resonant, heavy tones that come out of that. Since I've got this keyboard connected, we really have a six voice analog synthesizer here at our fingertips. So playing some notes. That's obviously got some LFO. Didn't really know that you could do that with a drum machine, but this is not your average drum machine, is it? So what we're going to do is I've got that same kit that I used on my performance earlier, and I'm just going to show you how you can take a sound and sort of sculpt it using what's under the hood here. So I've got a kick, and if we select on our screen section here, go to sounds, Anytime you start touching a knob or pushing a button, the screen here is going to reflect what's happening. There are subscreens, so you might have to cursor right or page up or down to get to some of the other functions, but the fair amount of stuff that you can tweak is on the front panel, as it should be with an analog piece of equipment. So the first thing we're going to do is let's take this kick, maybe it change its pitch. The way that you know which oscillator out of this voice you're, you're affecting. As I said, there's two digitally controlled analog and two digital based, wavetable based. You just push the select button and the screen will indicate which one you're looking at. So right now I'm looking at analog oscillator one and I can change that pitch. Now if I wanted to, I can cursor to the right and do some other things like change the, add some sub os in. Change the oscillator slop, and it is actually slop because this is digitally controlled analog oscillators which tend to stay in tune. But the real beauty of analog is that sometimes the drift in tune gives it that texture. Well, Dave, of course, put in a parameter which allows you to add some drift if you want it. The other thing too, as you page further right, is the ability to have the note or that pad when connected to a MIDI keyboard follow the notes on a keyboard as you play it to change pitch as well. And a wave reset. What wave reset does is that traditionally when an analog oscillator, the waveform is always going. With wave reset, every time you strike a pad, it starts from zero or starts from the beginning of the waveform, which gives you a much more true tone. Otherwise, you could get clicks and pops and things like that. Going from there, we've got uh, our low pass filter section, which we can add in resonance, do four pole or two pole, audio mod rates. And then a amp feedback. We can even get some high pass filter roll off. Pretty deep stuff. And right now we were just messing around with one of the four oscillators that could be on a pad. So if you were to use all four of them on a sound, obviously you can create some pretty interesting textures. Oscillators three and four, which are the digital oscillators, are using wavetables or samples. And some of those are traditional things like kick drums, snare drums, hats, and things like that. But there's also a bank of samples that are vector synthesis from the Prophet VS series, which Dave is very well known for as well. Let's go in a little bit further here. And let's look as we move across over into the section of the drum machine where you're going to start to sculpt the sound. If any of what I'm saying right now is a little bit alien to you, there's some really great courses here at DubSpot, both online and in New York, that allow you to learn the fundamentals of synthesis. So definitely check those out if you want to learn a little bit more about what I'm doing here and about synthesis in general. When you do that, you're definitely going to have a lot more understanding of how you're making these sounds and how to get just that tone that you're looking for. So with this being a percussion-based synth, We've got oscillators, we've got filters, that's great. We need to know exactly how the sound, the sound is going to hit hard. And to do that with percussive sounds, you need envelopes. Envelopes are going to be what's going to make that sound get its snap, get its pop, everything that you need to make it stand out in the mix. You've got five different envelopes on the Tempest. One which is assigned to pitch, which is how you can get that sort of sharp attack at the beginning. The filter, the amplifier, which is volume. And then auxiliaries, which are assignable, which is really cool. So you can have those do a number of different things. Moving on from that, you've got two LFOs, which are low frequency oscillators, modulation sources. You can use those to do things like change pan or change the filter. There's a lot of different ways you can twist those. And then on top of that, you also have modulation sources and destinations, an entirely separate mod matrix. As I said, this thing's no slouch when it comes to synthesis. There's a lot that can be under the hood. The great thing is that you don't necessarily need to know all of that to get some great sounds out of it. You can just call up a pad, start tweaking, 
and you're off and running. And then of course, no drum machine or no synth would be complete without a little bit of extra sort of sweetener on the end, aka effects. So in the Tempest, what we've got is the effects section here. From the mixer, you have the ability to do your level, your panning, and then there's a delay line. The delay line is actually not an audio effect. This is a MIDI delay. And if you've never used a MIDI delay, basically what it means is that when you play a note, it re-triggers that note at varying velocities lower. So it's, it's sort of the effect of delay without actually being an audio delay. And that ensures that the signal stays in the analog domain all the way up to the last part and, and the final output. Because if we were to put an analog delay in this, I definitely think it would cost more, and it would be a different beast altogether. The next two effects that we have are distortion and compression, and they are analog. So when you turn on the distortion knob, immediately you're going to hear a little bit of noise, which is interesting because it's analog distortion, and then the compression as well. And these are really going to give you some great punch and character on the sound. Looking on the back, if you want to process sounds individually, you do have separate outputs for each one of the six voices. So if you don't want to take the overall mix and run it through the distortion and compressor, maybe you want the kick to be tight without that, and the, the snare to be tight without that, you can have them on separate outputs. And then the main outputs are going to be what gets the effects that are here. If you're more adept at sequencing on software and you want to use this as your sound source, you can send your patterns through MIDI or through USB to the Tempest and then record the audio back into your software of choice. So it's a really flexible unit. So again, if you want to learn more about synthesis or sound design, check out the courses that DubSpot offers both online and here in New York. Again, I'm James Bernard. I'm here at DubSpot. I've had a lot of fun. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself, become a part of our community, and make music.